that, so it's been a while, but I'm back. Let's do the homework from last time. We did the first declension. We talked about how mostly it's feminine, but there are some masculine exceptions which we're going to hit, and then we're going to hit the second declension, and the second declensions are either masculine or neuter, and we're going to talk about that. Okay, so we have the word we uh, we I. All right, this is your word for roadway or path, and we know that it's feminine. Okay, it's first declension, and we are going to find our stem, and we're going to tack on our endings, and then we can say we declined it. And for some reason, I feel like I might have misspoken earlier and said conjugate. I hope I didn't. Um, this is like the fifth take of this video because I keep having things go wrong. So I'm getting, <laughs> I have now taught this lesson about five times. <sighs> okay, so here we go. Let's pray that this actually works this time. All right, nominative. I'm gonna abbreviate it. Um, genitive, dative, accusative. Ablative. Okay, hopefully you've been learning to write these in order and you know what these stand for. Um, you should be getting to that point. Uh, if you're practicing regularly and you're doing work uh, on your own, hopefully you're at a point where you kind of know what the devil these are. So, okay, we know that we take the genitive singular ending off. Okay, and that's where we get our stem. So our stem is V-I, okay, V, because the V makes a W sound in Latin until you get to church Latin, which we are not doing. Um, I actually don't even know if I can read much medieval or church Latin. It is a very different ball game. Okay, so uh, we need to put our endings on here. So we know that our nominative singular is A. We have an AE in the genitive singular, AE in the dative singular, AM in the accusative singular, long A in the ablative singular. Okay, AE, A-R-U-M, I-S, A-S, I-S. These two are the ones that students look at and they think that can't be right. They are. Okay, um, it doesn't look like any English words that we would probably use or see, but it's right, okay? If you found your stem correctly and you know the correct endings, it is what it is, okay? You gotta, you gotta get some of the English out of the way, so. All right, so this is roadway or path. This was your assignment from last time. We are gonna move on to the masculine exceptions in the first declension, and then we're gonna talk about the second declension, okay? In the first declension, we have some masculine words that look like feminines because they're first declension, and most words are feminine in the first declension, but these are masculines, okay? Uh, names of people can do this. Um, men can have names that end in A, okay? Even in English, we have like Joshua, okay, ends in A. Okay, well, same thing. And some of, some of the time they're talking about a Greek, um, and Greeks had A's on the ends of their names sometimes when they were men. So that happens. Also, the names of like rivers and things like that can be masculine. Um, but these are some common words in Latin that are first declension, and they are masculine. They are not feminine, okay? The way you can recognize these is that they are all occupations, okay? And in the ancient world, men were the breadwinners. They, they had businesses, they owned land, they, they did all that stuff. Um, women were um, not usually the ones to hold an occupation. Um, so that's just the, that's just the way it was. Um, I like to remember them with this little mnemonic device, okay? So I have the word pain written up here, all right? 
And actually, I have two words for the P. Um, sorry, but it just kind of works out that way. This is the word for pirate. Kind of looks like the word for pirate, so it shouldn't be that hard to identify as pirate. Okay. Um, and it's not, it's not the Pirates of the Caribbean kind of thing. In the ancient world, um, piracy was a huge, huge, dangerous occupation. Um, and they, they had a very, very rough lifestyle. Um, it was not Pirates of the Caribbean. It was not Veggie Tales, the pirates who don't do anything. It, it was harsh, okay? It's not something that you would want to sign up for nowadays, I'm guessing. Unless you really don't like yourself. <laughs> you want to punish yourself tremendously. So there's that. And then the other one is the word for poet, okay? It looks like poet, so it's kind of easy to identify it as poet. There were women poets, but most of their poetry didn't survive. We have very little poetry written by women. Um, so anyway, mostly men were poets, at least what we know of is mostly men. And then we have the A, Agricola. This is the word for farmer. We get words like agriculture. Okay. Agricola. We have the word for inhabitant. Incola, okay. And then we have the word nauta, which is your word for sailor. And we get words like astronaut, we get words like nautical, okay, you take your pick. Nautica, if you like to wear their shirts or whatever, or if you did when you were a kid, or had little sailboats or whatever the little little emblem was on the on the breast of the shirt. Anyway, so these are your very common masculine exceptions, okay? Like I said, there are others, but just know that they're out there and um, be aware of it. Remember, these are masculine, they are not feminine, okay? And you're gonna need to know these kinds of things because when we get to adjectives here very, very soon, if you have one of these and you try to put an adjective with it, you're gonna screw up your adjective too if you don't get the gender right, okay? So really important. Just become friends with the exceptions because exceptions are everywhere in Latin, all right? I'm gonna have to just suck it up and smile, buttercup, okay? So here we go. All right. Let's do the second declension. There are two kind of subcategories. We're gonna talk about one and then we're gonna talk about the other. The other one we might have to do in another video because my kids are taking a bath and if they descend upon me, um, that will be the end of my fifth attempt at this video. So I'm gonna try to get this done before they get out of the bath and I, uh, I have requests thrown at me. So here we go, masculine, second declension. Now there are two versions of masculine second declension. There are US ending and there are ER ending, okay? We are going to do the ER endings first because in a small way, they're just the weirder of the two. Uh, the US endings are a little more straightforward. So let's just do the ERs for now. We'll do the US's um, either in a little bit or in my next video, I will definitely hit them. So we're gonna do ER ending, second declension. These are all masculine, okay? Uh, second declension only has masculine and neuter. I think there might be like, like a word in, I don't know. Seems like in college or in grad school, we came across a US ending second declension that was actually feminine. So somewhere in the annals of Latin, I think there is some oddball out there, but let's just 
stick with what we really, really know, which is that these are masculine or neuter. Okay, this family is the second declension family. And we're gonna do nominative, genitive, dative, accusative, ablative. Okay, now, the thing with the ERs, the thing that makes them weird is that sometimes the E is there for some words and sometimes it's not for others, okay? And this is something you only learn if you memorize the nominative and the genitive singulars when you're learning your vocab, okay? And I recommend you learn your nominative and your genitive singular for every word, every noun you learn. Learn those two parts because it's gonna help you find your stem, it's going to tell you how the word behaves as you decline it. When you get to third declension, you will thank me for that habit, okay? Trust me, it's a very good habit to get into. So, here we go. We're going to do, we did puella for the first declension, so let's do the counterpart. Let's do puer. Okay. Here we go. We're gonna find our stem the same way that we found our stem for first declension, okay? We're gonna take off the genitive singular ending. For the second declension, the genitive singular ending is I, okay? Just the letter I. Do not, do not go over to the nominative and start hacking stuff off of there or just assume that the nominative is your stem. I've seen people get into that habit and they get to third declension and it's a whole new level of suffering, so don't do it, okay? Just follow the rules, just assume that they apply to you too, and, and find your stem this way, okay? Just trust me, you'll thank me for it later. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our stem, which happens to be puer, okay? This is our stem. Sorry for the handwriting. It's a weird angle to write at. And we're gonna write our stem down. Puer, puer. I can't write. Puer, puer. Over here in the plural. Now we need our endings, okay? Now you're gonna see in the US ending ones that there is actually like sort of an ending in the nominative. Um, and this one, it's just the stem, okay? Puer is the nominative singular, okay? So once you have the stem written down, you have the nominative singular written down, okay? And for the rest of these, we have to add an ending. Okay, so the genitive singular ending we know is I, so pueri, dative is puero, this is pueroom, um, puero, okay, we have duplicates here, and context will tell you which one you're dealing with when you're dealing with a sentence. Um, textbooks, when they ask you for a no context kind of parsing, they'll say there are two options or whatever. Okay, over here in the plural, the nominative plural is pueri. This is or room in the genitive plural. Remember we had our room, A-R-U-M. Well, now we have or room, O-R-U-M. Okay, not too bad. And then we have is again. Remember the is from first declension? Okay, well, it's back. And now we have os rather than os. We have os. And then we have is again. So familiar, not completely foreign and hideously unfamiliar, but a little different, okay? And this is the ER ending, second declension. It's all masculine. This is the word for boy, okay? I should have probably written that up here, but here, I'll just squeeze it in, boy. Okay, Ooh, that was really small. Um, so we have boy singular and boys plural. Now, I said that the E sometimes is present and sometimes it's not, and it depends on the word. So 
this one keeps its E, okay? So there are words that lose their E. You follow the same pattern for declining it, but you're gonna have to know that genitive, okay? If you don't, you can make some pretty significant mistakes. Okay, so let's erase this, and I'm gonna show you two words that are both ER second declensions. One of them loses the E, and one of them keeps the E. And if you screw it up, you can really make some strange sentences, okay? So, okay, these two guys. These are both second declension and they are both ER ending masculine words, okay? This is your word for child, okay? This is your word for book. So if you screw this up, um, you can go from having books in a bag to having children in a bag. It makes a difference. Notice here that the E is absent, okay? Very, very absent, all right? And the only way you're gonna know how it behaves is to memorize that genitive singular. Okay, we get words like library from this. Notice it's not library, okay? Actually, my grandmother used to say it really weird. Library, okay? No E, okay? And this is actually, um, the, the child being referred to here is, is um, a citizen, a free person. And so we get words like liberty. It's not liberate, it's not lib, I can't even do it. it liberty, it's liberty, okay? So um, anyway, it's really important. And these are things that you're just gonna have to memorize and accept and get through. The process for, for finding the stem and putting on the endings is exactly the same, whether the E is there or not, okay? You're still gonna take the I off and you're gonna be left with your stem. And then you just put your endings on, okay? Um, your, your nominative singular looks the same in both, in both words, okay? So context will help you if you have Liebherr as, as the subject you'll probably know um, whether it's a book or a child. Um, I would hope so by the context. So anyway, I wanted to hit that, really important. Um, and it's really nothing to be overly scared of, it's just that you need to be aware of it and you need to practice memorizing those genitive singulars so that you know that you can handle it. Okay, and you can find your stem and you can get your endings on there and decline like a boss. Okay, and since my kids have not yet emerged from their bath, we're going to hit the US endings really, really fast. These are also masculine. They are just a little different, they're not they're not anything super duper weird, but they are different. Do not add a US ending onto an ER ending second declension. Do not do this. I have, I have had, I don't know how many students do that. Okay, that is wrong, 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 wrong. ER endings and US endings are two different categories of second declension. They're both second declension, they both decline with the same endings and everything, but there's US ending and there's ER ending, and they do not mix. You're not gonna have puerus, okay? It doesn't exist. Okay, so don't do it. Um, you have to make sure that you have it straight in your head that there are ER endings and there are US endings, and they're not gonna mingle. Okay, they're not gonna get all mixed up with each other. All right, so let's do the word for bull. Because 
off the top of my head for some reason. I can't think of any others that aren't adjectives. I don't know. My brain's just tired. So let's just do Taurus. Tori. Okay. So this is a U.S. ending second declension masculine. And we know it's masculine two different ways. One, we recognize it as second declension. And so chances are it's either masculine or neuter. And since masculine is all you know right now, it's masculine. Also, this happens to be a male animal, okay? A bull is a male version of a cow, basically, okay? So, Taurus the bull, if you follow horoscopes or whatever, you might be familiar with that. Um, lots, of, lots of Latin names in the, in the horoscopes. We're gonna find our stem the same way, okay? And you're gonna you're gonna know that this is second declension by knowing these two pieces. Take that guy off. Take the eye off. Your stem is tor. Okay. All right. Uh, and I will write bull up here. That way you know. Okay. So let's just let's just decline it just to show that we can. This is your stem. All right, and I am gonna have to erase, so jot it down if you're taking notes, because it's gonna go bye-bye here in a minute. Okay. Yeah, we can squeeze it. Okay, so we have getting our stem down so that we don't butcher anything. Oh my gosh as I write a B, because I'm talking about butchering. And actually that was not meant to be a, uh, a pun with the word bull, but I guess that's what it turned out to be for those of you listening to my little mumbling session here. Okay, so here we go. We know that the nominative singular is Taurus. We have Tori. And then if you recall, the endings for the other second declension word that we did. Okay, we have O, U, M, O, I, Orum, Is, Os, Is. Okay, same thing, just a slightly different version, okay? the. The nominative singular is different, and the rest of it is perfectly predictable, okay? So nothing to be scared of, nothing to be worried about. Just know that there are U.S. and there are E.R. endings, and they're the same family. It's just that, you know, you have some, I don't know, you have some, <laughs> some kooky cousins or something in the family, okay? Everybody's family has somebody that's not quite the same as the other people, like the black sheep or whatever. So think of it that way, okay? You have the US and the ER. Um, I don't know if I would say that either one of them is more common than the other. I kind of think that the, the ERs might be more common, but the US endings are really common for um, adjectives, so you really do need to know both. Um, so there you have it. All right, and since I am amazingly still free of mommy duties, let's do the neuter just really fast because we can. I'm gonna erase masculine up here and I'm gonna write neuter. And that is my dog barking in the backyard at probably absolutely nothing. Okay. You probably hear a lot of noise in the background. We have birds and we have children and dogs and um, it's kind of a zoo around here. And get rid of that. Okay, so here we go. These are going to be your neuters and they are um, going to end in U-M and their endings are a little bit different. Now neuters are they're not neuters because 
of anything that we think of with like dogs and cats and stuff like that. Um, they're just grammatically, they're, they're neutral in gender, okay? Um, and it's not that they're all, you know, they're all like inanimate objects or whatever. Um, it's just, it's a grammatical distinction is all it is. So we're gonna use the word for war, bellum. Oh, why did I doubt that? My goodness. Now, you notice in the genitive singular that I is still there, okay? Yay, okay, something familiar? This is a little different. We had U-S before, now we have a U-M. This is a good way to identify that this is a second declension neuter, okay? Um, sometimes the differences are something to be really thankful for. So, we have bellum, belly, this is your word for war. Okay, uh, we get words like bellicose, which I don't think I've ever heard anybody actually say, but uh, it means warlike or, if you will, aggressive. Okay, so anyway, all right, we are going to find our stem the same way that we found the other one. Okay, we're going to take this I off, and our stem is going to be bell. Okay. Now the endings are, are mostly the same. We have three endings that are not the same and the rest of them are normal, okay? First of all, the one that is obvious right now is this is not gonna be the same as second declension masculine, okay? So nominative, genitive, dative, accusative, and ablative. Okay, so obviously the nominative singular is not the same, um, but there are two other situations that we're gonna come across. Bell is our stem, so let's get that down. Bell. If you really like your derivatives, uh, we also get the word belligerent from this, which is actually a word that people use. Um, if somebody says you are belligerent, it means that you are using your fighting words, okay? <laughs> you're, you're trying to pick a fight. All right, so here we go. We know that the nominative is bellum, and we know that the genitive is belly, and the dative is gonna be the same as we saw with the masculine counterparts. This is gonna be the same. This is gonna be the same. Okay, so so far we haven't really hit anything that bizarre. Now, your nominative and your accusative in the plural are gonna end in A. Here is your neuter rule, okay? I'm gonna write this on the board as soon as I finish this declension. In the neuters, your nominatives and your accusatives are always the same. And in the plural, they always end in A, always, okay? There aren't a whole lot of hard, fast rules in Latin, but there are some, and that's one of them, okay? So here we go, it's gonna end in A. Now you have to be careful, you have to know that that's a neuter, because what does it look like right now with that A on the end? First declension, it's not a first declension, and it's not feminine or masculine, okay? It's neuter, so you're gonna really hurt yourself if you don't know the form of this word in its original nominative singular, okay? You have to know that. So, bella, bellorum, we had that before. We knew, we knew that. Bellis, and here we go, bella, and bellis again. So, you have three forms in the neuter second declension that are different, okay? And the rest of them are predictable. Mom. And my daughter is here. Mom, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm trying to teach people Latin here, sweetie. All right, your homework. Homework time. Oh, and I will, um, I'll write the neuter rules up on the board before I give my kids a little of my time. Mom. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. You need help snuggling on the couch. You need help snuggling. Well, snuggling. let me talk about the war in Latin, and then I'll help you snuggle. So, here's your homework, okay? I'm going to give you a... Uh, I'm, I'm gonna give you a nice masculine to decline. I'm not, I'm not the homework girl. Okay. Sorry. All right. So here is your here is your challenge. Here's your masculine. This is my other daughter, and she's here to say hi. You want to say hi? Yeah. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> Come here. Say hi. Uh. <laughs> okay. All right, Kongs, back up. All right, so here we go. Let's do, uh, you know what? Let's do the word for book. I want you, hey guys, <laughs> back off. That way they can see. So this is your word for book. Try to decline that one all the way through. Yeah. <laughs> this is going to be a Okay, that's enough, guys. Mommy. That's enough. Your, your neuter rules before my kids. What's that smell do? Oh no, it's probably the dog. Okay. It's the same. What was that noise? What um, noise? Your neuter rules. The nominative and the accusative. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, back up. I'll be there in just a second. Are always the same. We made it night. And my son is here. <laughs> and sun is all night. And in the plural. They end in A. Mm. Like my dress? Like the blue. The way my dress? My dress is Do beautiful. Do you make a... Make a all right, all right. So let, let mom, my, let my mom, friends... Mom, make them peel it. Make them peel it at the end. There you go. There you go. All right. Good job. So it's officially time for me to quit. I will see you guys next time. Bye.